Hello again everybody. Today we are going to cover the engineering station. Engineering is probably one of the most difficult stations to master, but it is also one of the most valuable stations to master. As you can see, it has a completely different display than helm or weapons did. What we've got here is basically a damage view of your ship, and you can rotate the ship around by clicking and dragging. These blinking white diamonds are your damage control teams. You have three of them. They have a limited number of members, six each, so don't go losing them because they're a very valuable resource. You can only replenish them when you, st when you dock at star bases. Each of these points here shows a critical hard point. So we've got warp drive in the back, which is where our engines are. We have re four rear shield generators and two impulse drives in the back. You have two more kind of on the port and starboard sides and then you have your maneuver points here as well. Again this is for the light cruiser. The different ship classes look different. You've got sensors, torpedoes, more sensors, more torpedoes, front shield generators, and then of course our favorite thing primary beam weapons. On the left here is roughly the same information that you would have at helm or weapons, but you also have this information right here which shows you the overall damage value of these components. So as you take damage, for example, let's say we got hit in our maneuver node, it would turn red and this maneuver would change colors and numbers. So it would go to like a more yellow color or if you took a lot of damage it would go red. The options that you have down here are your energy levels. So for example, we have primary beam, and if we crank it up to 300%, we can fire 300% faster. But as you notice, this bar right here is filling up very, 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 very rapidly. Okay, Let's see what happens when we let it get all the way up. Oh, we just took damage to our own ship. So obviously, you don't want that to happen. Basically what happened is this is a heat bar. If that heat bar goes up too high, you will take damage. You mitigate that with coolant, which is what these little dots right here are. You can adjust them manually, like I just did there, so that's maximum, that's some, or you can just do a few clicks, and there you go. Now, I've got my damage control teams set to automatic, so if something gets damaged, they go and try and fix it immediately. But what this does is this increases the amount of power to a specific system. You need to offset that by adding coolant to whatever you need. Now the problem is you only have 8 units of coolant and you only have 8 components. So if you want 2 units of coolant in every system, well, you're not going to get it. All right, But if you want to have 1 unit of coolant, in every system. You can do that for a slight boost across the board. So if we go to say 130 percent on our rear shields, see the the heat level isn't going up at all. Let's increase this a little bit, keep going. So there's 150 percent. Okay, so now we're starting to gather a little bit of heat. So usually anything under about 150 percent, so say 140 percent, this coolant will hold it steady. And again, staying in the green is not a big deal. You can also save your presets for specific combat uh, situations. So for example, let's say we're in regular cruising mode, we're just flying around the galaxy. Well, we don't need any power and beams. We do want to keep power and torpedo in case we need to load uh, weapons into the torpedo bays. Again, you crank this all the way up, you're loading and unloading torpedoes at 300 percent speed. Uh, if we increase sensors a little bit, science is usually happy with that because they can perform their scans faster. Maneuver is very handy when you're trying to get in behind a ship that is quick because you maneuver better. Impulse allows you to travel faster at sublight speeds. Warp increases the speed 
your warp goes. So warp 1 at 150% is going to be faster than warp 1 at 100% for obvious reasons. And then you have your front and rear shields. Knowing how to manage each of these is very important, and it just takes practice to learn. As I said before, you can store specific loadouts. So let's say we're going to go for a combat situation. So let's do, say, 150 in beam, 175 on torpedo, 130 in maneuver, and 142 on forward shields. I can now press 1, and that will save my loadout. If I press 2, there's a different loadout. If I press 3, there's a different loadout. If I press 1, here's my main loadout again. Very simple. So again, engineering, probably one of the most simple yet complex at the same time. And yet, it's also probably one of the most important. The hardest thing about playing engineering is that you have the least information available to you. So while yes, you do have long range scan options, you don't have any other fun stuff like Helm where you can get a scan view of what's going on. It, I would recommend if you're playing this with less than a, you know, a full ship, you need to have uh, one person dedicated to engineering if you're going to do engineering. You can usually double up on other stations. Engineering is too time demanding to do so. So that's a basic rundown on engineering. Good luck on it.